All right, so as we finished up the last video, I noticed the sound quality. <laughs> I, you know, why in the hell does the phone cut the mic off when I haven't cut it off? Now, for 10 videos, it stayed on, and, and then I noticed uh, the sound was bad, but I didn't go back and record that. You know, that can, you can only do these so many times. I, I only have so much time to spend on this. Okay, but, you know, we're, we're, we're getting damn near 30 hours of rain. I mean, this is great. I mean, look at, you can kind of see the tent. It's right back there. I mean, it, we got some flooding. It's sitting in a pool of water back there. So, uh, I, this is going to be a real, real good test. I just had, uh, as I'm making this next video, um, this is my introduction to it. Uh, you know, we talked about staking out the guidelines. I did not do that, so we'll see. Maybe that, that might put some water in the tent. I, I don't think it will. Like I said, it was, it was on there tight. Uh, another thing was there was a, a footnote in the directions. It, it wasn't like in the step-by-step -step directions, but if you go to the first page, they talked about one of the difficulties I had hooking on the, uh, the, the rain fly. <laughs> I kept calling it canopy or whatever I was called. The rain fly is that uh, it was really hard to get them hooks on there, and I was kind of forcing them. And, uh, it, and just in a little side note, they say, well, maybe unzip. Uh, the windows a little bit and unzip the fly so that you got a little more leeway to, to hook that in Duh, I mean come on man. Why not put that in the step-by-step -step directions unzip the rain fly so that you can before hooking it on so that you don't uh, stretch out the, um, the Anyway, whatever I, I, that's why I said I rewrote the directions and I'm gonna post them if I can to this video um, You know we talked about the hooks going up uh, I guess that's about it. I just kind of wanted you to see the test that we're putting this tent through. I mean, this this is this is brutal. I mean, this is worse than what I faced on my trip. Although it poured down. I mean, this has just been a steady, well, semi downpour. I wouldn't call this like a you know a thunderstorm where you can't you know a real good thunderstorm. You can't see you know you wouldn't be able to see the uh, the shed back there. But as far as like really soaking a tent, you know, a lot of times when it, what happens is the fabric gets wet. If it's not uh, thick enough or it's not treated properly or it's not made of the right material, and then that water just kind of soaks through it and it'll drip, drip, drip right down into that tent. If this thing is dry tomorrow, Cabela's, Cabela's, you got the bomb. You got the bomb. All right, that's it. I just wanted to show you one more time. I mean, that's... This rain is unrelenting, and it just keeps going, and this is going to be a wonderful test. All right. Lynchburg has rock and roll. Get that a little louder. Okay. I just, <laughs> I'm just sorry. I, that last video, I know I was going crazy. I, I, I grew up in this town. They've been playing classic rock, you know, 40 years old, 80s, 90s, you know. And this, this is 98.5 in Lynchburg and 97.3 in Roanoke. I, I guess it's a new station. I mean, and, uh, and even they say on the station, they say, you won't be listening to classic rock on this station. Yeah, baby. All right, enough of that. So, this is the moment of truth. Uh, hey, let's flip it around here. All right. So, Indiana Jones. Are we going to see the Temple of Doom? Or are we going to find the Lost Ark? That remains to be seen. Now, all I did was unzip it in the front and the windows, so we're going to have light in the tent. I haven't been in to look. I, I, I tried not to look as I unzipped it because I want to find out if it's wet with you. Now we just had three tremendous days of rain back here and you can see it's still wet. Look around. I mean this is this is still wet and nasty you know and by the way <laughs> I did notice on the tent there's there's a lot of ants crawling on this tent so I must have put it right in an ant farm when I put it up so if you did put it up you'd be moving this tent but anyway so, so let's here's, and same with this side you can hook that there. Now the, the vestibule is really nice. Uh, you can just lay it up here on a non-windy day and you don't even have to worry about it. 
but they also have these, which most tents have. So you can roll up that vestibule and just hook it in right here and just have it hanging down. So let's, uh, you can see the, uh, you know, my feet are wet just, just standing on the um, poncho and the poncho is still wet. So let's go in for the moment of truth. There is no greater test I could have given this tent. A long, soaking, pouring down rain. I doubt there's many tents on earth that can survive that for three straight days. So let's check it out. All right, here we go. Oh, man. All right, we got a little, little drip right there, but... That's probably just when I was battening stuff around, a little condensation on the inside, which can be expected. But you're looking, and I'm looking. It's dry. It's dry. Let's go all the way around. That, my friends, is amazing. I have a new home. We got see, we got a little little drip there. You know, you keep a towel in here. Now, once we get that. Uh, um, you know, I'm going to set up the inside. There's actually some gear, which once again, there's no directions. And I'll try to try to figure out, because you can put some, there's some extra hardware that we're going to put inside the tent. This is my first visit inside the tent. You see, we got cup holders. That's kind of a nice touch. So you can have uh, your drinks in here and a place to put them. Because, uh, you know, these tent floors are real uneven. And uh, you try to set up a beer or a pop or whatever, uh, you know, on the floor. And then the next thing you know, it's turned over. So, but I'm just, I'm just amazed. Look at that corner there. Oh, this is where it's going to, that thing that I'm going to buy for the floor. Well, I've already bought it. I'm still waiting for it to come in. We're going to clip that in. You see how it's going to clip in on all of these clips? And that's going to protect this floor. Uh, you know, you can put a ground cover underneath this tent if you want to. I don't think I am. I think I'm just going to have that uh, clipped in cover because that'll protect it if you want to bring some furniture in here, like some chairs and stuff. You know, be sure they ain't metal legs or something. I mean, don't be crazy, but I mean, you could probably put some put some stuff in there that you don't want to poke a hole in that tent floor. Let's put it that way, and that should give us some added support. So, success. I'm going to be dry, finally. On my way back from Florida to, um, I mean, way back from Virginia to Florida. And while I'm here, I've got some headbanging music. Uh, so the next uh, step we're going to do with the tent is uh, I'm gonna just put it right over here, let things dry out real well. Uh, like I said, we're gonna do a little more on the inside of that tent. I'm gonna put that gear in there and show you what it looks like. And uh, and then I'm gonna do a speed video and I'm, I've already determined I'm, I'm gonna record it at 10X, 10 times. Uh, All right, so anyway, rock and roll, yeah. Okay, so this is why I'm a video idiot. Um, Cabela's does provide a clip right there to peel the windows back and, and bring the rain fly off of the windows. And uh, I just didn't see that before. Um, so I owe Cabela's an apology on that, but Cabela's, Cabela's, Cabela's. Oh my God, putting this this floor uh, liner in. Holy shit, I mean, here, take a look. <clears throat> it's about 70 degrees. Do I look like I'm sweating to you? Hey, parlor buddy, is this enough sweat for you? And man, I tell you what, you wouldn't want to put that floor liner in on a hot day. Oh, hell no. And, uh, you know, it's, it's odd. Luckily, I'm in the shade here, and I still worked up a sweat. I mean, the way it should have gone in, in my opinion, would have been with clips. You know, you just clip them together, just like just like with the rain fly. Okay, here's, here's, here's a clue for you, Cabela's. Here you go. See that right there? See that little clip? Yeah, let's, let's clip the uh, liner in with something like that so that, you know... You're not threading it through a little, uh, well, I'm going to show you guys what, what they did. Um, the big complaint about this tent, big complaint. So let's get on in here. Okay, now, here's another clue for you, Cabela's, okay? Put top and bottom on the rainfly. Now, I assume the shiny part goes towards the bottom because that's the way my uh, sleeping mats are, because that shiny part reflects the okay, moisture. I've been doing this video for about the third or fourth time. Let's go in and look at uh, my gripes. Uh, one of the things uh, with that uh, floor liner was this clip right here. See how that is? Hello, Cabela's. This would be a nice touch to put that floor liner in. You can just clip it in. No, no, you got to let me thread it through this little freaking loop and uh, and then sweat my ass off for, for gosh knows how long trying to get that floor liner in. You know, but now I can assume, well, I can leave it. Here's the ants all crawling. <laughs> 
<laughs> crawling all over the tent. Oh my God, I put it in a bad spot. I wouldn't want to be here if I was camping. But uh, anyway, um, you know, I just suggest, uh, you, well, number one, if you, if you get the tent and you put the floor liner in, just put it in, leave it in when you put the tent away and that way it's ready to go. And the nice thing about that floor liner that I already said is you can take it out and clean it. Um, but it ain't coming out until it's real dirty. I can tell you that because I ain't putting it back in. I, I was sweating in 65 degree weather. So I can't imagine putting it in on a hot day. But here's what the floor liner looks like. See how it hooks in right here? Okay, and the lighting, light, light got away from me. We're not gonna get the speed video done today. Ah. Now here's, here's a nice touch. I was telling you that some extra gear came with it. Now you, I assume you could put a tablet in there and just lay on your back and kind of watch a movie. That's a nice touch. Uh, I just, now I didn't, there's no directions on, once again, how to put this in. You know, you got a little pocket right here where I guess you could you put your cell phone or something. Um, oh, well, you could hang your cell phone right in there and watch the cell phone. Um, you know, I got the windows down, a little better lighting. I just made a video that I didn't have it down, so I thought, hey, let's pull it down. So, uh, but you know, hey, once again, Cabela's, look, I mean, this is the floor liner. There's a shiny part, which is what I got down. And uh, and then there's there's this part, which is not quite so shiny. Now, from from my sleeping mats, the shiny part goes down to reflect the uh, cold ground temperatures. When, you know, in a cold, if the ground's frozen or whatever, that that keeps the best sleeping bag from getting so cold by laying laying on the floor here. Uh, and so I just would put the. Uh, but it'd be nice, Cabela's. Hey, you could put top and bottom, or uh, front, like put front right there so that you know which which goes towards the vestibule uh because th this is you know it's 135 centimeters by 155 centimeters and so yeah it gets, becomes pretty self-evident about how to put it in um but uh you know the, no directions on any of this stuff uh here, here's another one i mean look at here we got these little loops right there and there and there now I haven't shown you one of the cups, but it just pops down. So what, what's that loop right there for? Hey, Cabela's, wouldn't it be nice if you could say what that's for? I mean, I don't know. I guess to tie off to something. Um, I, I'm, I assume it's just maybe a nice touch to have something to tie off onto. Uh, anyway, uh, that is enough for, for this. And we're gonna do that speed video next. I gotta take this tent down because it's supposed to rain tomorrow. I got ants crawling all over the tent. I got to clean the tent up. And, uh, and, then, and then once that speed video is done, we are done with the Cabela's Guide Tent Series. Uh, you know, I, uh, more, than, more compliments than anything I can ever imagine, but uh, there's, there's some bad things. Like I said, I'm gonna leave this floor liner in here when I put the tent away. And we'll just put this, tuck this into one of the uh, cup holders right here. Uh, and that way it'll be in the tent when I put it up. Because I'm gonna tell you, this, this stuff tends to get lost. If you uh, try to put it in the bag or whatever, you know, this way you get out, you're camping and you realize, oh, geez, yeah. Now, I, you know, in, in, a, in a year or so from now, when this thing's out of warranty, I'd cut them damn labels off. I don't know why they hang shit like that. All that is is extra stitching where the tent can leak. Uh, you know, who gives a crap? You know, uh, protect your children. Who? I mean, who doesn't know that? Cancer, uh, rep cancer harm, you know, and then of course it's written in foreign languages and. I, you know, I, it, it, I don't care. You don't need stuff like that stitched into the tent. Although it's probably a legal requirement, and that's the the bull crap that we live with in the, in the United States. But um, anyway, that's that's enough. Let's. Uh, I got to edit this thing. Oh, here, I, I, I was just telling you, man. I had the phone on Do Not Disturb, and a phone call came through. What the hell, Google? What does do not disturb mean if it doesn't mean do not disturb? Why did the phone call? Well, okay, you got to put it on silent mode now. Okay, so now, now not only do you do do not disturb, you got to do silent. And I guess what is do not disturb just for text messages because it didn't seem to work with the apps. You know, I, I'm a video idiot, but I tell you, this shit's getting frustrating, man. I, I Every time I turn around, something's going on with the damn phone and it interrupts the videos. And all I'm trying to do is make videos. And yeah, I'm a video idiot and making it with a phone's probably... A bad idea. Hey, I, I forgot to comment on it, but uh, another thing about this tent is uh, the quality of these zippers, man. Now this one's this one's pretty heavy duty. There it goes. Yeah, but in here, in the in, inside the fly, boy, I'm gonna tell you those door zippers are heavy duty, man. They're hardcore. 
you're not going to have to worry about the zippers on this thing. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Cabela's, man, you owe me money. <laughs> I've been complimenting your tent all day and going, hey, boy, I wish I could get that eight-person tent. You know, but boy, if it's just me going camping, that wouldn't make any sense at all. But I don't think I'll get my wife out camping anymore. <laughs> we had some bad times. Oh, and right, here's one other tip. We're going to get into eventually, what, after the speed video tomorrow, putting the tent away. And so when you fold the tent up, you're going to want to fold it the same length as the poles. And see, that's the pole bag right there. And uh, so when we fold that tent, we're going to try to keep it that length because that's the bag that's going in. Now, I left the floor liner in the tent back here, and I... I zipped that, uh, that tablet holder or, or cargo bag or whatever you want to call it into the window. I'm trying to keep that plastic from getting bent, you know? So I was hoping it might stay somewhat straight, zipped into the window. Because, uh, you know, you don't want to lose that stuff. I'm just going to keep it inside the tent. And then, then when I set the tent up, it's right there. When I unzip that window, I go, oh, yeah, I remember now. It's a year later, you know. Oh, yeah, we got this cargo bag. <laughs> I'm just telling you how tents go. So there's no right, rhyme cool. or reason about how to take the tent down but uh, I'm just going to kind of tell you how I'm going to do it, and I think it's going to go pretty smooth. You know, from experience, you know, Velcro, you don't want to leave that uh, brickly surface out rubbing against fabric. So make sure you, you seal these up. That's the way the tent came. I'm just putting it back the way that I, it was when I put it up. And then I'm just going to kind of go, uh, and by the way, I, I said C, D, and E. It's actually E, D, and F. I'm going to take uh, F off first, you know, and then work my way backwards through the poles. And it doesn't, I don't think it's going to matter that much. But, um, you know, of course, but remember that C's over top of B, which is over top of A, so I think it'll be a lot easier just backing the tent out the same way that you put it up. So, and uh, I'm sure that's going to work just fine, but just, just want to give you, and, and Cabela's, of course, says, nothing about that, Cabela's. Where the hell are the directions? All right. So, so by the way, that worked just perfectly. It's just like being a software engineer when you're going to reverse engineer a program, which I did for NSA to help spy on everybody in the country multiple times. <laughs> it really wasn't my intention to use my data structure software. But anyway, so uh, yeah, you, you, you wanted to go um, F, D, E, and then of course you went C, B, A, and, uh, and just by reversing those poles the same way you put them in, made it really easy. And uh, by taping those poles, you know that I taped them, um, that, that helps them pull through these sleeves and, uh, you know, the A pole is green and the B pole is black and then you got the C pole, which is uh, yellow. So they are color coded. And uh, as long as you just uh, be organized about picking this thing down and putting it up, you're going to so be fine. So every time I think I got this tent figured out, <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole new dimension. to uh, Look at these little straps. See right there, right there, right there, right there right there right there and right there and right there obviously they're made to go around the poles and there was nothing in the damn directions about that but i <laughs> and I made, there goes the phone bleeping again what the hell all right so I, i'm not even gonna worry about that but, you know video idiot I'm, i still keep trying to stop that crap um but i you know there was nothing in there about this, and I'll put this in my directions, but obviously they are meant to go around the poles, and this will keep that tent fly from flying off of the tent or breaking apart, and it'll secure them to those poles that much better. I just said, Cabela's, man, revise your damn directions or put up some gosh dang videos about this stuff. I shouldn't be the one showing everybody this stuff. But uh, anyway, yeah, even more bomb-proof. What can we say?